Dell and welcome to my channel Sofa Serenity. This is where I talk about my love for dressmaking, fabrics, patterns, my love for sewing just in general, um, general sewing chit chat and live chit chat. So if that's something that sounds of interest to you then keep on watching. Welcome back to all my regular viewers and if you're new here welcome, glad to have you and I hope you enjoy what you see here. So this is my Friday Sews vlog, where I talk to you about what I've been doing this week and what my plans are for next week. So what have I been doing this week? Well, first of all, let's start with what I'm wearing. So I'm actually wearing my pearl, Tilly in the Buttons pearl cardigan, which if you haven't heard of, I don't know where you've been because it's been all over Instagram, all over the um, fellow vloggers have been making this. Um, as soon as I saw this pattern, I purchased it because I just thought it was really unusual and just um, the pictures on the on the actual um, model just really do it justice. Um, as you can see. So I just thought it was really, really lovely and uh, purchased it, as I said, straight away. Um, the fabric that I've made it in is this leopard print knit jacquard. It's quite thin. Um, and it was from Fabric Godmother, but I know, I think Guthrie and Garney have got some. Um, Fabric Godmother still has it in, in stock and they have it in coral as well. But I've, I purchased it in mustard because I did it after, I purchased it just after I'd done my um, colour analysis to see what colour suited me and mustard was one of the colours that came up in my colour palette. So if you're interested in looking at what colours um, are good for you, then... Um, check Halesmore sewing out she actually is running a year-long challenge called hashtag sew your colors 22 where um there's a free app that you can download it analyzes your um colorings in your hair and your skin and then recommends what colors suit you and which colors stay away and i'll insert a picture of the color my color palette for those of you that haven't seen it already so as i say mustard was in my color palette so i ordered this with the um pearl in mind and as soon as it came I washed it and cut it out I had it cut out for quite a while um because I was going to do a sew along but as I shared last week my sewing space is not ideal at the moment I'm having a conservatory built which is going to be a toy room slash office slash sewing room and once I've got that I should have a bit more space to be able to um really get the best out of a sew along i didn't want it to be messy and higgledy piggledy and also if you did want to watch a sew along i know Paige joanna um has actually released one um so there's already one out there if you needed it so i'll stand up and show you my pearl and i think you can see it I'll, i haven't got a picture of me wearing it um because i finished this last night and I wasn't feeling very well um, so I didn't feel like um, modelling it um, just try and get my camera so you can see so as you can see it's got I did the balloon sleeve option which I really really like it's worked really well with this fabric I think you can do different sleeve options on this cardigan um, I've gone for this the balloon option but you can do a straight option I know that a lot of people have lengthened the cardigan. I found that the length was just perfect for me. I mean, I haven't got a short torso. I've got short legs, but not a short torso. And I feel it sits just in the right position to wear with leggings. Um, so yeah, I'm, I really, really like this. It was really, really lovely to sew. It was simple to sew up until this element put in the ties. One tie is longer than the other and you have to get it on the right side of the fab oh, it, it was I got very confused I don't know if anybody else got confused I think what would really help in the Tilly and the Buttons instructions is if they used a pattern fabric so you can really see which is the right and wrong side of the fabric um, because it's just a plain fabric in the pictures and I printed out the instructions really small as well which didn't help my case um, which meant it was quite hard to see the details in the photos but I got there in the end and um, I was very very careful that I didn't overlock straight away I did tack everything in first to check I was happy with it and I'm very glad I did that on the waistband because the first time I attached it I'd actually got the long tie the wrong way round so it meant it didn't tie up properly so um, I'm really glad I did that 
um, because otherwise it would have been a bit of a nightmare to A unpick and then I would have obviously lost my seam allowance. So that is a good tip for anybody that's doing a pattern for the first time or it's got a bit more complex um, fastenings, you might want to tack first. I just did a straight stitch on a four, four to five um, so I could unpick it if I needed to. And then once I was happy with it, I overlocked it into place. So yeah, the, there's a tutorial as well on Tilly and the Buttons website about how to strengthen the, um, where is it gone? I can't find it. Oh, it's here. So it's this side. How to strengthen the opening that um, the tie goes in. And it's similar to a buttonhole and, and, and putting some bar tacks on it really is what you're doing in essence. But that was really helpful. And I use that tutorial. Um, so yeah, I think it's a lovely style. I'm going to make a few more of these. It'd be interesting to do it in some different fabrics. I've seen some people have just done it in cotton jersey, viscose. I'm wearing this as a top really today. Um, it's probably a bit low. I'm thinking of putting a snap button just there, just so I feel a bit more comfortable with it. Because I know I keep like checking that I'm not kind of flashing. Um, but obviously it's a cardigan so it's not, it's meant to be over a top but I just really like it as a top on its own so I think that's probably what I'm going to do just a little metal fastener and pop that in there but yeah it'd be nice to do in a sweatshirt um yeah all different types of things I think really so that's a pattern that I will definitely do again so yeah Tilly and the buttons yeah you've smashed it again really great pattern and if you haven't tried this check it out <laughs> um so yeah that's the first thing that I've made the second and final thing that I've made actually is just sitting next to me here. <laughs> so I have got a photograph of me wearing this, which I will insert. This is the toaster sweater. No, it's not the toaster sweater. This is the Jarrah sweatshirt, which I'm sure you all know by Megan Nielsen patterns. Um, I initially brought this pattern because I really liked this line drawer in here, the one where you tie it at the side. Um, but I had this fabric which um, was only a metre, it might have been less than a metre actually, um, that I got from Guthrie and Garney, it was a remnant piece. Um, and uh, you needed a little bit more fabric to do that, that version. So I just wanted to do a plain version with a white waistband and white ribbon at the top. Um, the amount of fabric that it takes is, let me just check here, I do the size six which is a uk 10 and view a says it needs 1.1 .1, but i definitely didn't have 1.1 .1. i had less than that and managed to get it all on um, and i used just some white ribbon for the ribbon on the bottom so i'll insert a picture of it here or here um it's really nice it's a boxy style which i really like a little bit oversized and it's got these kind of dropped dropped sleeves and I think this is why you can get it on so little fabric because of the sleeve type. Um, I really like it. And I would like to make the, the next plan that I've got is to make this version um, when I've got a bit more fabric. Um, really, really quick to sew, really, really easy. I did it all on my overlocker, bar the neckband. I always, always tack that in first. And yeah, it's all sat really, really nicely. I've also put a little tag in the back that I got from Sew Anonymous, which was the Material Girl tag. I'll put a picture of it in there. Um, I'm really loving using my tags. Again, I forgot to sew it in before I folded the neckband over, so I had to hand stitch it. Oh my God, it's just so frustrating that I forget that every single time, but never mind. So yeah, so... Um, I recommend this pattern as everybody else who's made this has. It's really straightforward, as I say, and I'm looking forward to making a few more versions of it. So they're the only things that I've actually made that I can share with you this week. Um, so it hasn't been a massively busy sewing week, but I have been doing lots of things sewing related. I have done some um, cutting out of things. So I've cut out the sagebrush um, by Friday Pattern Company, and I've cut it out in this fabric which was this heart animal print. If you can see, so in this heart animal print fabric, which is really, really lovely. It's in the rusty, rusty orangey color, which is my color palette. So I've cut all that out and that's ready to sew. It does take quite a bit of fabric, this. Um, so I, I went with this fabric because I had enough. 
um, and I've got that on my plans to do this week so expect hopefully a sage a completed sage brush um, by the end of the week so that's one of my plans for this week the other plans that I've got this week is to cut out possibly not so or maybe st I might start to sew is the Meliot Meliot is that how you say it by Deer and Doe shirt I've got a meter of this beautiful fabric that I got from Blackbird Fabrics with the cats the cats in the garden as you can see oh i'm always holding it upside down cats in the garden there we go <laughs> um which i really want to make the melio shirt in um so I've, I've got the pattern cut out i just need to cut out the fabric so i'll definitely get it cut out this week whether i start the sew i don't know um and the reason why i'm not sure if i'm going to start getting that done is I've got quite a few um, challenges and quite a few vlogs that I need to film and, and get organised with this week so one of the things that I am working on is um, my collaboration with Lush Cloth they very kindly have chosen me to do a vlog for them in return for some fabric so I had been I'd identified a pattern which I made a twirl of um, which went really well I made some tweaks to the pattern really just around sizing and um, have cut out the lovely fabric that I've got from Lush Cloth um, with, the, with the pattern so I'm going to be looking at sewing that up this week because I really need to get that sewn up and vlogged and ready to release and I can't wait to share it with you it's going to look amazing and I, um, I'm very excited um, it was very very scary cutting out that fabric because the responsibility was weighing on my shoulders but fingers crossed it's all cut out lovely so i hope that will be coming soon um the other thing that i've been doing is i've been cutting out um some lovely fabric that i'm excuse me i've been cutting out the other thing that i've been doing is cutting out my um collaboration that i'm doing with claire off stitch hem so um we are doing the same pattern um but there's lots of variations that you can choose for this pattern um so we're doing one pattern um between us but i'm going to be interested to see what her version looks like compared to my version so i've cut out my version in some beautiful fabric um and i want to get started on that this week because we're looking at releasing that around the 14th of the month so obviously i can't share that with you yet but it will be coming so those are those two things the other things that i'm working on is there's some sewing challenges that are happening which i'm sure you're all aware of um the first one is sew frugal 22 which if you haven't heard of it i don't know where you've been because it's all over the internet so this is where you sew a free pattern with some fabric from your stash and on the 31st of march you upload it with that hashtag and sag for and tag frugalist summit frugalissima and rewind the yorkshire sew girl in and you could be in to win some wonderful prizes so i've been doing quite a lot of research this week and been picking patterns that i'm considering and also fabric that i'm considering so i need to film my vlog for that because i've got to upload that on the 22nd of march um, where i will be running through the five different patterns that i've got and the corresponding fabric and getting some input from you guys on which ones you think i should be doing um, it will need to be quite quick once um because my video is being relaunched on the 22nd i actually need time to sew it so i'll probably just put a quick poll out afterwards to see which one you wanted to, me to go with so that'll be really interesting and interactive for you all um so that's that challenge the other challenge that i am going to film a separate vlog for this week is the so yellow for endo 22 which is a fantastic challenge that jess from so what if i Sew launched last year um so if you don't know what that is jess um suffers from endometriosis um which is a chronic condition that affects a lot of women in the uk and goes undiagnosed and the longer it goes undiagnosed the more um devastating the long-term effects can be and it can cause infertility in people um, so jess um is launching has launched her so yellow for endo challenge where it's about um endometriosis awareness basically um and just creating the conversation to talk about 
women's health really and menstrual cycles etc um so she's i'll link her her card uh, link a card to her launch vlog where she talks all about it because it's a really good vlog and she's really passionate and i really recommend you watch it it really inspired me i was going to enter the challenge anyway but she's inspired me to do my whole vlog about it which i'm going to do and upload where i talk about my plans um fabrics that i've got and go into a bit more detail about my experience with women's um health and not being able to get help from doctors etc around it and how we need to promote talking about it more and it not being such a taboo subject so watch that space for this that and then finally the final challenge that i wanted to talk to you about and um i'm only just giving you a taster at the moment is myself and the lovely crystal at my social thread who um i promoted in my last video We've kind of become great Instagram buddies um, and supporting each other um, through this sewing vlogging experience. And she reached out to me the other day saying, hey, shall we start a challenge? And I can't take any credit for it because it was all her idea. But she's come up with the idea of selfless sew April 22. So for the month of April, we want to dedicate the month to selfless sewing. So for a friend, a family member, even a pet, charities, whatever you want to sew for, as long as it's not for yourself, um, you can enter the challenge. So we are going to be doing some promotion around this at the beginning of April. Um, obviously, at the moment, there's quite a few challenges going on in March, but me and Crystal will be probably uploading our own vlogs to talk about what we're going to be doing so we've got loads of sponsors on board already who have volunteered prizes um and yeah as you know i used to say i was a bit of a selfish sewer but last week and the week before i'd started doing some sewing for my daughter and i really enjoyed it and the joy that it brings you actually is really satisfying so i think that's a really good feel for good thing to do in april so yeah watch this space um and i'll link all the details about the challenge below and you can find out more on our instagram pages so yeah so that's that challenge as well the other thing that i wanted to talk to you about was my inner haystack pack so i don't know that for those of you that know in have heard of inner haystack it's a digital digital sewing subscription pack which is 10 pounds a month and within that pack you get um, basically a digital magazine that's emailed out to you on the third of the month um, and I'm just going to look at my notes as I talk you through this um, in the pack you usually you, you always get a pattern from an indie pattern designer obviously it's a pdf you always get a discount code for a fabric company in the UK or the US so um, those of you who aren't in England you can benefit from that discount as well it's usually the US or Canada um, you also get um, like articles, information around the challenges that are on this year. Um, you also get um, discounted pattern printing from an American or British um, pattern printing company. And they will do your free pattern that you get at a discounted price, which is always really good. And then the magazine has pictures of um, makes from the previous month that makers who subscribe to the pack have um, made which is really really nice and um, there's interviews with the pattern designer there's also interviews with the fabric stores and um, yeah it's just really really good and um, this week this month sorry I couldn't I was really excited um, when I saw what the pattern was and what I've done is I've recorded um some footage of the pattern website for you so um I'll insert that in a second so the company that the free pattern is from is a company called Puff and Pencil what I'll do is I'll insert some footage of the website and the pattern is a dress pattern however it's an interactive dress pattern where you can basically um choose the base choose your sleeve and choose your collar and create basically your own look so if you have a look on here you can see different sleeve options the different dress options with a collar without a collar and you can go through that they've got like a pencil skirt um, a trapeze skirt a wrap skirt a ruffle skirt like loads and loads of different types of um bases as they call it of the structure of the dress i chose the trapeze um, and then you can add whatever sleeve you want to it. So you've got a puff sleeve, balloon sleeve, flounce sleeve, 
um, bishop sleeve. Um, I've gone for the puff sleeve um, and then you can add a collar to it so there's different collars that you can add to it as well um, I've gone without a collar on this I just want to go plain um, and then obviously select your size and it gives you advice on what sizing to do depending on the style of the dress um, but I just thought it was so clever um, and then if you want to see what it looks like in real life they've got like inspiration page where they've got real models wearing the dresses um, and I was keen to see to see what it would look like because um, sometimes the line drawings are great but it's really good to actually look at the um, model drawings and, and see what, what um, fabric's been used. So I, I had a look and found the trapeze with the ruffle, sorry, the, the puff, puff sleeve with the trapeze and you can see that there in the yellow gold. Let's click on that. So yeah, I thought that looked beautiful. And that's like a jacquard um, print. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different examples of the dresses. I mean, that's a lovely one as well. So yeah, the, the company's called Puff and Pencil. She's Danish, I think, the lady who um, runs this. Um, and she's called Anne. Um, and she um, developed this... Uh, she created this company during the pandemic um, and there's a great interview with her in the haystack pack where she talks about her inspiration etc um, so that's really really cool so um, puff and pencil if you um, are interested in checking that out it's really really cool I've never seen anything like that before so yeah check it out and obviously I've got my pattern free but if you want to get a pattern you can just go on there and buy it yourself so that was really really cool um, I would never have found that without this in a haystack pack and then yesterday, one of the sponsors for the challenge that we're doing is the Fabric Revival Shop, Fabric Shop. So I was having a look on their website yesterday and there was some really cool um, boucle in a, in a forest green that I'm dying to, to make the coat again by um, sew over it. Um, and it takes three metres of fabric and boucle can be quite expensive, but they had this boucle on there, which is in this forest green for five pound half meter so I thought well, that's not too too bad and they had some really cute denim as well um patterned denim so I had it all in my basket as you do and then I was I don't know something stopped me buying it um at that point I thought probably I'll just leave it see if I really want it that type of thing anyway when my inner haystack pack came through this morning yeah yesterday um the Fabric Revival was the company, the, the British dis, the British fabric store that we got a 20% discount for. So I was able to get all that fabric that I wanted with the 20% off. So that's really exciting. And I ordered that yesterday and it's been shipped today. So that's really, really great customer service. Um, so if you haven't already, check out the Fabric Revival store. The Inner Haystack Pack has an interview with the owners of the fabric stores. So it's Marie who runs the Fabric Revival. Um, and yeah, there's an interview in the, in the Haystack Pack with her and you get to see what she likes to do, what her, her um, where she gets her sewing inspiration from. And it's just nice because you get to like see the face behind the company um, and she tells you a bit about her business. So I really love the In Haystack Pack. You can read it as a, as, as a um, email or you can actually listen to it audio through audio um, you can click a link insert a password and then you can listen to it where it's read to you um, so I just think that's fantastic it's a lovely Kate who runs in a haystack um, subscription and um, service and as I said it's £10 a month um, and she's actually been very generous and when we were chatting on Instagram if you want to s um, sign up for the inner haystack um, for next month if you use the code Adele you'll get 20% off so you'll get it for £8 for the first month which I just think is just a bargain you can't get a PDF for £8 um, and especially when you get introduced to these indie pattern companies that you just wouldn't have known about so as I said in the pack you get the um it's always a, a theme around the pack you get the pdf sewing pattern you get the two fabric discounts you get the discounted pattern printing and there's always an extra extra treat in there as well also you've got interviews stories um tips and tricks and lots more um and and you don't have to um you can stop your subscription at any time um so yeah it's really flexible so yeah if you want to sign up for the inner haystack you can get 20 percent off this month as i say and use just use a code adele and that's valid till the end of march so yeah i just wanted to let you know about that 
so um that's really all i've got to tell you about this week really um as i say my plans for next week are going to be um sewing related but maybe not loads of sewing that i can show you um as i've got all these little challenges and things that are kind of bubbling away i keep joking saying i'm gonna to have to hand in my notice because doing all this sewing is just a full-time job in itself um but yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed my vlog today. Um, sorry it's not got as much sewing as I would normally do, but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you don't already subscribe to my channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Um, and if you've liked this video, click the like button. Um, and that's all from me this week. So um, I will see you soon. Thank you very much. Happy sewing. Bye.